editor Angela here. What you're about to hear is just a quick 10 minutes, 15 minutes of me and Sugar reacting to episode five right after we finished watching it because we got together in New York City. We're in the same place. We're like, oh, let's record together. So we did that. We were going to throw it on the Ahsoka react episode this month, the bonus one. But since it didn't fit because we recorded for like an hour and a half, I'm just throwing it up all by itself. So enjoy. Hello, we have just finished watching episode five of Ahsoka, and because we're in a different location than usual, and also Sugar and I are together in the Woo-hoo! same room, hello, um, we are currently underneath the table covered in blankets to preserve as much sound as we, as we can. I don't know how effective it's going to be, so if the sound is weird in this episode, it's because I couldn't fix it as the editor, and we are under the table, so you're welcome for our dedication. <laughs> Sugar, would you like to start off with your initial thoughts? Okay. Um, I think that it was really fun to see Hayden. Always love seeing Hayden in anything Star Wars he is choosing to do now. Um, it's always a good time. He's always doing a wonderful job. There were some fun visual effects for him as well, which I'm sure Faye is going to expand on in her turn. Oh, I'm yeah. going to talk about them so You're much. You're absolutely going to talk about them. Um, and... I think Baby Ahsoka was doing a very good job. I don't think there's anything wrong with Baby Ahsoka. I do think that we, I, like, personally, I think I would have wanted ah- Ahsoka to cuss Anakin out a little. That would have been nice. I think she could have yelled at him, told him off a bit. Um, I think we could have dealt with her betrayal over what he did a little bit more. Um, but just in terms of Baby Ahsoka's performance, I think she did as good as she was going to do. Um, thought it was interesting they decided to bring in the Tales of the Jedi costume <laughs> instead of any other costume. It's a pretty costume, no, not going to lie, but, you know, I just thought it was an interesting choice. I think that they really didn't want to put their 14-year-old actor in a bikini, essentially. So to be I fair, think... we don't know that she's a 14-year-old actor. But... Okay, they don't want to put a child portraying a 14-year-old in live action in a bikini, so they already introduced the outfit in Tales of the Jedi, so why not just continue to use it? Why not just use it? it, yeah. was very glad we finally got a live action Rex. A little sad he didn't have a face, but... <laughs> I, I think my favorite moment in the entire episode is Ahsoka holding the di- injured, injured or dying clone's hand. I don't know if he, I don't think he actually dies, but he appears to be very injured since his entire face is covered in bandages, so they didn't have to deal with that particular problem, <laughs> but let's assume he was very injured. <laughs> but I think that that was like the kind of moment I really, really wish we'd gotten so many more of in Clone Wars, where we see her grieving over the clones, connecting to the clones to kind of explain why... There's this whole thing in season seven about how they're so loyal to her because I, I think that there was a little bit of a disconnect in that in Clone Wars. So this was a really beautiful moment, I think, to see um, for Ahsoka to have that connection would be great if that translated into present day and we got more Rex <laughs> with actual Morrison showing up as old Rex. But I'm not holding my breath on that one. You never know. They did bring Rex up. And so the possibility of Rex showing up in this is not show, zero. It's not zero. The, the odds are not completely nil. They're low, but they're, they're low, not nil. But they're not nil. Um, we did get so much more Purgle content. This was also incredible. Love the Purgles. Purgles are always great. Um, I did like that we got to see more full, uh, full body images of the Purgles. Last time we kind of got to see them still in pieces. So that was really beautiful. I have feelings about the Anakin and Ahsoka relationship that are not generally positive, but I think that there was an interesting thing that they were trying to do in this episode in the quickest possible way they could, and so it didn't end up very fleshed out, of Anakin, I guess, trying to force her to confront a dark side, I guess, so that she could not go dark. I guess maybe that's the part I'm unclear on, is what exactly Anakin is teaching her to do. He says he wants her to choose to live, I assume is kind of what we're doing here, but like by forcing her to confront darkness. I don't really understand the trajectory of what is happening in this lesson that is happening uh, between the two of them. I don't think that that was done particularly clearly. I think a lot of it was there for nostalgia bait and cool visuals more than actual narrative quality. (laughs) But, you know, it had nostalgia bait and cool visuals, so I guess it works. So now that we've had the deep, incredible thoughts from Sugar, let me explain to you, all of my beautiful listeners, who I know like two of, (laughs) I received in this episode a beautiful gift, which was Clone Wars Anakin, Hayden Christensen in the Clone Wars armor, and therefore, anything that the Ahsoka show does from now on, I will forgive. I don't care what they do from now on. They could say that Sabine is the new emperor, and I would be like, I don't care. I don't care because Anakin showed up in his Clone Wars armor looking beautiful with a nice haircut. 
and the armor. I'm in love with him. Um, anyway, so actual thoughts. Arguably, I, I think he looked a lot better in the Clone Wars look than he looked in the World Between Worlds look. Which is ironic, considering we've seen him in the World Between Worlds look before. We had not seen him in the... The Clone Wars look. Yes, thank you. But I think they let him be more natural in the Clone Wars look. I think he looked a little bit more natural than he does in the World Between Worlds one, where he seems a little, you know, airbrushed and kind of dreamy. But I do think that was intentional, because they want him to look like a ghost, whereas Ahsoka is supposed to look like she's still alive. And Anakin is dead, so he's supposed to look kind of creepy and ghosty. Yeah. I, I, it's possible it was intentional to make him look a little dreamy, but I'm not. You're not holding up. Huh? I'm not certain. She's not sold on it because it's, it's okay. She doesn't love Anakin like I do. I mean, I like Hayden. It's and true. I want to support and Hayden. Hayden is beautiful. My further thoughts are I really, really, really enjoyed what they were doing with Ahsoka up to this point. I know we haven't recorded the full episode with like all of our thoughts yet, but. <laughs> I haven't actually written all my thoughts down because I just finished watching the episodes today. But all I... five in one day, just for context. No, no, I watched the first one yesterday. That's right. Yes. <laughs> all five in 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, really like how they're showing Ahsoka having these doubts about whether or not she is really a Jedi and whether she wants to follow the Jedi way, whether she wants to train a Padawan the same way that she was trained. Well, not exactly the same way, but in the same tenets, essentially, that she was trained with. And I really like seeing her struggle with that and then coming to terms with that, which is what I think she was trying to, they were trying to do with Anakin, was coming to terms with the fact that she does want to be a Jedi. And she does want to follow this path that she has been put on by Anakin. And even though Anakin himself strayed from that path, that's still a path that Ahsoka is willing and wanting to follow. She still wants to live and to live as a Jedi. And I've liked her coming into that and then coming out of the water and like doing the whole white Jedi thing because she is fully choosing to be that person now rather than going her like, stupid gray Jedi whatever fucking arc they were trying to do with her I do think that the purples and everything was really really beautiful and we'll discuss that more when we actually do an episode sure but this episode especially I really liked how they were completing the journey with Ahsoka there was no Sabine in that episode which is probably a good thing because yes. I have issues with how they're handling Sabine I don't think she's the right character for this but we did get a Leia mention and thank yes. fucking god we I miss her mention. And a Kanan mention, not to, not to, you know, say that that was not also important. He is dead, obviously, and Leia is not, so she is doing things. But we did get Kanan mentioned. We also got a Leia mention of her, like, working with, like, the hero side. I'm air quoting right now, the hero side. Because, like, you know, depending on your point of view for her hair or not, whether or not she's doing the right thing. And boy, do we have thoughts on that. <laughs> boy, do we have thoughts on that. I think that's everything. Yeah, I mean, I can just hit on, like, I think Hera deserved what she was getting in this episode. She did. She low-key did. But I'm proud of her for, you know, making sure her child didn't die, I guess. She did get two pilots killed, but... Uh. Yeah, to be fair, that was last episode, but, you know. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, just, I, I think Hera, you know, deserved the demotion she's about to get, you know. Like, Hera's just off doing whatever the fuck she wants, and I think that there is a you know, there is a valid point to, like, rules exist for a reason sometimes. <laughs> Hera is blatantly ignoring them. I do wish that Jason had been the one to more legitimately find Ahsoka too, because I am going to bring up, probably at some point later, Chopper did a large num num amount of the work there. It's Chopper who actually finds Ahsoka and gets the coordinates. Jason basically just convinces Hera that Ahsoka's alive out there somewhere. Yeah, but he's it's the one who finds her. But it is Jason the, is the one who finds the proof that she is alive. He is the one who finds like the sound and the force and the feeling that she is still there and waiting yeah. to be rescued, and then works with Chopper to actually find her. So, we don't know that he works with Chopper. Well, he's like standing he's there, so I assume he's like, "Hey, Chopper, do this." We don't know this. That is though. like the implication, though. But I think I would have wanted Jason to be more involved. I would have wanted Jason to be on the ship with her and kind of guiding her there. I think that would have. That would have been nice. Been but a little bit maybe more they were worried about child, child endangerment. <laughs> that would have been the one like more genuine thing for Jason to do, though. But I think the thing that shows up in this a lot, and it kind of uh, pays homage to what you're going to talk about with Sabine later, is that, like, boy, it should have been Jason in this. Boy, it should have been Jason boy, in this. Boy, it should have been Jason like, in this Like, Sabine line. could still be there as, like, basically, like, a co-mentor for Jason. Like, she could have been, like, the... I'm, I'm going to say the Obi-Wan to ah Ahsoka's Anakin even though that's not exactly the dynamic, but like, she could have been, like, the co-mentor person for mm -hmm. Jason because, like, that is, like, someone that she still really cares about. And that could have been, like, a really interesting dynamic versus having like, this weird, like, mentee-mentor thing with Ahsoka with Sabine, which doesn't super work. I mean, I guess they're Padawan and Master now, but... 
Anyways, we should wrap this up because it's getting very hot it's down so here. It's so hot down here. You're so welcome for our suffering. <laughs> <laughs> and we will have a much more extensive discussion on Ahsoka after it's done. Which I'm sure will be just included in this because I'm not going to put this up by itself. No. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Our intro and outro music is Moss Isley Cantina by Speed Kicks. Angela and I edit. Our artwork is by me, and Sugar is our writer and researcher. You can find us on Instagram and Tumblr at Unleash the Goats. Thanks for listening. <laughs>